story time. I was working on a tutorial last night and I ran into one of the dumbest behaviors in Chrome that I've ever, ever seen. It just, it drove me mad enough that I decided I had to do a video about it today. And I haven't even finished the tutorial because I've just been working on this. I'll show you guys how we got here first and foremost. Here is the issue I was facing. I was using a dialog element. I can just show you the code for that quick. It's relatively simple. Uh, at modal here. It's a portal, which cool, ignore that part. This is entirely about Chrome, not the portal. That's just how it gets mounted. I made a dialog element that has tailwind for full screening, width and height, position absolute, background color, yada, yada. Notice this though, height screen and width screen. These should respectively be 100 VH and 100 VW. But if I go to Chrome here and I open up one of these things in the modal, you'll see there's a border around it. What the hell? So like. There's this margin around this, even though it's set to width and height 100. If I inspect, you'll see here that the width and height are 100 VW and 100 VH. So that should be full. So this has to be like there's padding on it or something, right? Let's set padding to zero and margin to zero. Now it's just shifted up left. Are you kidding? What? Why is this element that is specifically set to a certain width and height and just not honoring that at all? What the hell is going on here? My first suspicion is this obnoxious pseudo element backdrop. So I started playing with this. We'll just add here again, margin zero, padding zero. Huh, nothing changed. Are, are we sure this is right? Background, color, pink. Okay, clearly that's right because this is the full thing, even though this other element doesn't work. So if I go back here and we scroll to the bottom, you'll see that in Chrome, you have your little positioning thing here. This doesn't see any padding. This doesn't see anything at all. So according to this, there's nothing. But here's where things get really stupid. This is the point where I went insane. If we change it from margin zero to what it was by default, which is margin auto. Now when you hover, you see that margin there. And if we go back to the bottom here, now it knows about this random 19 pixel margin that isn't in any of my code. I did not put a margin on anything here. There is no reason this element shouldn't be full width and full height. It's not the parent div. There is no parent div is effectively in the root. It doesn't matter there is nothing that is causing this element to be the wrong size. Ready to see what the problem actually is? Because I tweeted and I got a lot of replies of people thinking they knew the problem. I had 25 people reply, one of them was right. Ready to see how stupid this is? First off, it is a pseudo element. It's just not one of the ones that we saw there. It's not one that exists at all inside of here. You cannot find the pseudo element that is the problem. The pseudo element that's the problem is dialog modal. So what are we gonna do here? Just margin zero, Padding zero, that should fix it, right? Of course not. Why would that fix it? That's too logical. It turns out that on this random hidden pseudo element that only exists on dialogue, <laughs> there's a max width and a max height. <laughs> and now we're good. Now it's fine. So how could we ever have known about this? How could we have ever known the max width and max height were being applied here? I'll show you what it's supposed to do that it doesn't do. So if I reload this again, I expand the computed section once I select this here. So we're in the dialogue. We can scroll through the styles all day. And what we're looking for, it will not be in here. The colon modal pseudo elements are just not included. So how could we ever have known this was a thing? Because like literally the, the code for this is not in here. You can't scroll and find it. There is nothing in this view at all that indicates this max width and max height are being applied. So where is this information? If we go to computed, if we scroll down here, you'll see that there is a max width and height being applied with this weird calculation. This is not code I wrote. This is not code that's even visible in styles. This is coming from a user agent style sheet, the dialogue, internal dialogue in top layer. This comes from Chrome. This absolutely should be visible, specifically under here, the same way we have the different states and selectors here, there should be a little grayed out section near the bottom that has that state. We have the internal dialogue in top layer here. This should show that max width and height. And it just doesn't. So Chrome is adding this awful default that is part of the Chrome user agent style sheet. So this is not code that I wrote or any package I installed wrote. This is part of Chrome itself. And they don't even expose it under the style tab so you can't find it. Yeah, huge shout out to Wako for finding this for me. I had had this bug before and couldn't remember how I fixed it and I couldn't find the code where I had fixed it. And this is the default user agent style sheet I think his screenshot's from Firefox because it actually shows it there and it doesn't show it in Chrome. Here are the default styles that get applied. Keblaro just found the link for the source code in Chromium for this. So you can see the actual built-in CSS here. Here's the actual code that's committed to Chrome. 
Max width is calculated to be 100% minus six pixels minus two EM, and max height is calculated to be 100% minus six pixels minus two EM as well. What? Why? <laughs> This looks like jank code that we add to our projects to like fix our top nav and shit. This does not look like code that should be part of Chrome itself. Why the hell is this here? Why does this exist? Someone tagged an Una from the Chrome team to take a look and she also fairly assumed that that would exist inside of the tab as I showed and it just didn't. Like the style tab does not show the default styles. It only shows in the computed tab, which was obnoxious. It made it really, really hard to find the stuff. And I, I'm hopeful that due to my terrible experience here, they might actually change Chrome and make these things visible so it's easier to fix, but this was chaos. I was very unsure of what's happening here and like why this bug could even exist. So I did what any logical person would do when they have a weird CSS issue. I tagged in Kevin Powell. Kevin Powell, if you don't already know him, is like the CSS wizard on YouTube. Phenomenal. Kevin actually recently made a video responding to my min with zero on all elements thing, showcasing why that might not actually be a good idea. So Kevin's very willing to defend browser standards. He's very much one of the earlier people to be like, yo, the browser works this way for a reason. You shouldn't necessarily change it, even if it makes our lives easier as devs. A lot of respect for him. We often don't agree. But if we disagree, he's the one who's right almost always with CSS stuff because he knows his shit very, very well. I bring him up because I tagged him in as any creator like myself would. I'm not encouraging you guys just tag him whenever you have CSS issues. This is my privilege as a creator. So I tagged him because I was actually really curious. His reply, I honestly wonder if it would be such a bad thing for new elements that have default padding and borders to just have a user agent styles to set the box model to border box. There might be a reason not to, but it seems like it would be a lot simpler and easier for everyone. W what? Why are we talking about border box? Oh boy. In case you're not familiar with the border box chaos, Box sizing is a property in CSS that determines whether or not the border affects the size of your element. Traditionally, when you apply a border, it affects the size of what's inside. The default value for box sizing is content box. With content box, the content inside is the thing that's 100 pixels. Content box effectively makes the border into a margin where it makes the element bigger because it goes outside of it, which means it changes the layout of your page, which is awful. Because if you add a border or remove a border, things shift around and the location of that element will change. The hack that people used to do to fix this is they would have a transparent border when they had no border, and then they would make the border not transparent when they wanted it to show because otherwise elements would move around. Horrible. As such, border box was added, and it tells the browser to account for any border and padding in the values you specified for the elements width and height. This means that when you have an element with a border that turns on and off, it doesn't affect the things outside of it, which is really, really nice. Basically, everyone just sets border box for all of their box sizing by default. Like, it's a very, very common reset, probably the most common reset. Thankfully, we're not the only ones that recognize this is a mistake. The actual CSS working group totally gets it too. This is a list of the things that they believe were mistakes in the design of CSS. Why don't they just fix them? Well, if they did, all old sites that worked around it would break. So they can't just change these things. I'm beginning to think we're at the point where we need to do a hard change similar to how we added strict mode in JavaScript. I think we need a strict mode in CSS, but getting all the other browsers to catch up is annoying enough that it's not gonna happen. It'd be nice, but it won't happen. One of the listed items here is box sizing should be border box by default. They understand that. Also, <laughs> table layout should be sane. Honestly, the things in this list are so great that I should probably do a video of its own just about the content of the list of mistakes in design of CSS. Let me know in the comments if you'd watch that video because I think that'll be a fun one. I pulled that link from a really useful reply from Benjamin, who is the only person to actually explain what happened here. Everyone else's explanations were kind of dumb. I don't want to like put anyone on blast, but I got like seven to probably 20 replies of people saying, well, obviously it works like that. What if you want to click on the outside to close it? No, just no, that, that's not what happened here. And, and to assume that like, like ugh, I, I could rant a lot about people assuming they know more than they do and just making weird assumptions like that. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the actual reason why this exists, which is dialogues have a default padding of 1 EM and a border width of initial, which maps to medium, which is three pixels, because that's the default border size in the browser. Since box sizing is content box by default, the maximum total content width and height of a dialog filling the viewport is 100% minus the padding and the border, because there's the 2EM of padding for the default for the element, as well as the six pixels for the border on each side. You have to multiply the width of the border by two because it's on the left and right, and also the top and bottom. So if you do that for the width and height. So that's how we get the six pixels, which is a very strange value. And the two EM comes from that weird default padding because it's one EM of padding, so they have to account for it on both sides. Blech. As Ben mentioned here, 
The fact that box sizing defaults to content box is a historical mistake that the CSS working group seriously regrets. But if user agents were to now change it and set it to border box, which is what it should have been, on all new elements, it would lead to even more confusion. If some elements were default content box and others were default border box, yeah, that could add confusion. I don't think this confusion matters that much because the people trying these new elements also already have reset the border box. Yeah. But as he said here, since we set box sizing to border box, the logical consequence is that I also have to adjust the max width and height to 100% instead of this awful calculation. And I got permission to cite this here too, because it makes a lot of sense. With that context, the reply that we got from Kevin probably makes even more sense, where Kevin thinks that the new elements that keep getting added to the browser probably should have these default paddings and borders handled without the user agent bullshit and just use the border box. Like it should just be that. It's annoying that it wasn't just that. Sam's reply was reset.css, which like, yes, a reset should cover this, but sadly a reset didn't cover this. I might even try and bug the Tailwind guys to change this on their reset because this sucks. But uh, my reply, I'm about ready to reset top browser standards because this shit's so bad. This is why people make fun of the web. These things are so obnoxious. But Ben came back in clutch here. You could literally set star, comma, backdrop, all on set in your CSS to delete all browser styles. But it's kind of hilarious that you also have to add the backdrop because star <laughs> doesn't cover the backdrop pseudo element. <laughs> the browser is such a mess, guys. The only thing that's cascading in CSS is the tech debt. And it has been cascading for what, 40 years now? Yeah. 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 Fuck the browsers. We need better standards. And I lost a lot of time to this. My tutorial would be coming out tonight if it wasn't for this bug. But I literally spent 40 to 50 minutes just trying to fix it, going through all my usual debugging steps, entirely unable to figure out where this is going wrong. And yeah, turns out this is a really bad decision that exists deep within Chrome. That's all I got to say on this one. And until next time, peace nerds.